welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I, as always, am very happy to be with you on a Tuesday for another author interview. Hope you had a great weekend. If you had yesterday off, hope you had a great three-day weekend, or however long it might have been that you, you know, as I always say, got... I always like weekends that are the a good mixture of productive and very lazy. So <laughs> when when I can have that and, you know, I get stuff done that I want to get done, but I get stuff done that needs to be done. And I can also just hang out with the puppies and um, read or hang out with my hubby or watch TV or whatever it is. But I hope that you had that that kind of a weekend. Let's, let's talk about books. In, in particular, let's talk about today's book that I am speaking to the author of. That book is called She Rode a Harley, a memoir of love and motorcycles. It is by Mary Jane Black, and the description is as follows. A courageous escape from domestic abuse is rewarded with a happy late in life remarriage in this motorcycle diary of love and loss. A school teacher escapes an abusive marriage and finds love on a blind date. Mary Jane's new husband, sure that riding a Harley will restore her confidence, ends up following the white lines with her through 15 years of marriage. Traveling together side by side on their Harleys, they learn to be parents, both on and off the road, until Duane is diagnosed with cancer. When he is gone, Mary Jane must face life solo once again, but she'll never be the same. So this is a memoir. Mary Jane tells her story of um, escaping from that first marriage, the abusive marriage. And that's just really the beginning. I mean, that that's we we hear that story at the very beginning, but everything starts when she meets Dwayne on this blind date, and then we read the story of their relationship, of their instant connection, and then their life together, their 15 years of marriage, their raising of their daughters. Um, they each have a daughter that they work at step parenting and parenting together. So you get, you know, some of that blended family aspect. You get Mary Jane moving to a new state that she's never lived in before. And then the Harley riding, which I found fascinating. I mean, never done it. The only motorcycle I've, I've never been on a motorcycle. I've never ridden a motorcycle. My mom's cousin, Mike, such an awesome guy, had a motorcycle that he rode everywhere and he had a sidecar. And when I was, oh, I don't know, seven or eight, I got to ride in the sidecar and I got to wear his wife's leather jacket and she was like six feet tall. So me wearing this leather jacket was, was uh, pretty hilarious. So that's, that's as close as I've been to being, to riding on a motorcycle was riding in the sidecar. And that was pretty, pretty cool, especially since, um, I thought Mike was one of the coolest people in the entire world. So, uh, that, that's my only har, uh, not Harley, my only motorcycle memory, <laughs> really. <laughs> so I'm fascinated by Mary Jane's story and let's go ahead and let her talk more about that story. Here is my interview with Mary Jane Black, author of She Wrote a Harley, a memoir of love and motorcycles. Hi, Mary Jane. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being here. I am very excited to talk about your debut novel. Uh, it's called She Wrote a Harley, A Memoir of Love and Motorcycles. Before we get to the book, though, if you could share just a little bit about yourself uh, so my listeners can get to know you a bit, that would be great. Okay. Well, the first 42 years of my life, I lived what I think was an ordinary existence, which probably tells you a lot about me because 23 of those years were spent with a, an emotionally abusive husband. But I was a wife and a mother of two children, living what I thought was the life I was going to live for the rest of my life, until I made the decision to escape in the middle of the day in a U-Haul. And because of that, I met the love of my life and learned to ride Harleys. And I loved both the man and the Harley as we moved into my new future. Yeah. And even though um, the the escaping part of your story is is pretty brief at the beginning, I mean, it's, 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 it kind of leads you into the rest of the memoir. I still had this like, and, and, and I knew that you 
from reading the blurb, I knew that you did get out of that marriage, but I still had this major anxiety reading <laughs> reading those couple of chapters. <laughs> Oh, well, thank so, you for that. And actually, friends who know me say they felt anxiety, and I thought, you knew I, I survived. Right. But I'm, right. I'm glad I communicated, because truthfully, in that moment, I did know that I might not survive if he had yeah. come home. I mean, I did fear for my life, and it's why I decided to leave. Yes, absolutely. So let's talk about the the memoir, which happens after the the kind of after that part of your life. Um, can you give us a brief overview of the book? Well, the book is what happens when you do decide to you know take another path and decide to get out of the situation. And certainly was not ready and didn't really believe in love at first sight. And but I did meet Dwayne on a blind date at Chili's on May twentieth. And it is sort of the story of both of our 15-year marriage and, and his diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. It is also kind of a story of what happens when you allow yourself to, you know, to love again and never give up hope. And certainly Dwayne believed that if he could put me on a large Charlie, then it would rebuild my confidence and give me, kind of give me my voice. And he was certainly true in that case, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's... um. It, well, let, let me let me back up, and we'll talk about what what prompted you to write this particular memoir. Uh, well, what prompted me to write this memoir was that I was I found myself alone again after you know he succumbed, he lost his battle with pancreatic cancer, and I spent about two and a half years wanting to write our story because I believed it was a remarkable story in lots of ways, and I'm sure everybody believes that about their love story. And I met Joyce Maynard at the Texas Book Festival, and she encouraged me to come to Guatemala to a Munwa writing workshop, which I thought was kind of crazy going to Guatemala. But indeed, when I got to Guatemala, Joyce encouraged me to write, instead of trying to write about the cancer and the grief and the pain, that I should write the happiest story I knew about our time together. And that was when we rebuilt a 1980 Shovelhead Harley when we were first married. And so... When I read that essay the next day, I was crying. We all loved Dwayne. We drank a toast, and I knew that the story had to start there. And so I began writing in January 2014. Mm-hmm. And let's talk a bit about the Harleys. I mean, you started out kind of traveling with, with Dwayne for work, so you, you guys knew that you worked well together. And then you started rebuilding this Harley. You had no mechanics experience, is that correct? When no, you started? no, no. Yeah, um, I was a high school English teacher, as you learn in the right. book, and later a high school principal, and and truthfully had no real experience with motorcycles or that side of my life. But I had married a man who started riding Harleys at 13, so I was soon introduced to the idea of riding motorcycles, particularly a love of Harleys. He actually had not ridden for 13 years at that point himself after the birth of his daughter. So I think our coming together put him back on Harleys and also introduced me to Harleys. I'm going to interrupt so that we can take our first break of the podcast, but there you get a a glimpse of Dwayne and Mary Jane's life and their love of motorcycles. She is definitely way braver than I am in so many ways, (laughs) so uh, I really enjoyed this conversation because it's a life that I... I can imagine, I guess, but uh, definitely not that I have experienced. So we are going to talk more about Harleys and the book when we come back. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships, well, Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Today I'm speaking with author Mary Jane Black about her memoir, She Wrote a Harley. 
And uh, we were talking about, obviously, riding Harleys before the break. And we are going to continue to talk about that as well as the book and Mary Jane's experiences. So let's go ahead and get back to that interview. So you start out rebuilding the the shovel head together, and then you start riding with with Dwayne on his Harley. But then you learn to ride on your own. Um, was that something that you were excited to do, or was it your idea? Was it kind of Dwayne's idea? How did you end up on your own Harley? <laughs> well, it was sort of my idea in many ways. We moved to Northern California from Texas in '99, and suddenly there's a story there that I tell in the book. But when I got there, he always worked at Harley shops, and Harley shops are closed Sunday and Monday, so I had Saturdays on my own. And at one point, it was just really cranky that I couldn't take a Harley ride on Saturday because he had to work. And I thought, I'll just see if I can ride my own. So I took a motorcycle class at Gilroy Community College and got on it and just loved every piece of it. It was a little nerve-wracking. And exciting because for some reason my biggest fear was shifting a motorcycle, mm-hmm. which turned out not to be a problem at all. But I, I thought it was going to be like a manual car, and it really wasn't. But there were a couple times in class where the instructor would say, shift up, shift down. I'd say, nope, nope, I'm just fine in first gear. And so, <laughs> but man, I'm just picturing you riding around in first gear forever. <laughs> yeah, well, it certainly drove Bill the instructor a little bit crazy but then eventually I realized that especially a Harley has a heel and toe shifter and so when I graduated that which means you sh- just step down with your heel to shift up so it became a much easier process and it became automatic of course I no longer thought about it but there were some fears and nervousness and Dwayne had always said that you know there are two kinds of people in the world the ones who get on two wheels and go woo never again and those who get on and go woo yeah let's do that again and I belong certainly to the latter group and but I knew I could go back behind him if I'd been the first type. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, how? Well, first off, you you ride a, a regular size Harley in the book. You don't ride ride what they consider to be uh, girl Harleys, I guess. <laughs> I don't remember what kind those are. Um, those are sportsters. They are. They're, that's they're right. Lobster. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you ride um, a. Full size Harley, is that correct? A full size Harley? Or am I, I don't know the terminology, I apologize. Yes, um, no, that's no problem. Yes, I rode what they like to call baggers, but those are just the big ones with the hard saddlebags and the fairings or that windshield on the front. That's, that's the difference. Oh, okay. Okay. And, um, how do you think that the, the, the Harley riding kind of it changed you or affected how you look at life? Well, it certainly, taught me some lessons about myself that I certainly had lost faith in during my first marriage. I really came to believe that I could do anything. In fact, my daughter said at one point that if her mom could ride a Harley, she could do anything. So it certainly was that feeling. There's a feeling of independence and freedom. I made lots of female biker friends, and there is a strong sisterhood, certainly in that. And it requires as a woman, and we must be honest about some of our weaknesses, or we do not have the upper body strength, so I had to learn how to sort of wrestle an 850-pound Harley back and forth out of parking spaces. Mm-hmm. But that sort of overcoming physical challenges in any sport especially teaches you that you can do things that you don't think are possible. And that certainly carries over, even though I don't ride a Harley anymore right now, that I I have more of a sense of self-confidence and feeling that I can do it, and I'm physically stronger than I think I am at times. Mm-hmm. And you are, um, uh, well, in the book, you you are a high school English teacher and a principal. Do you get strange or surprised looks when, uh, you know, people tend, we, we tend to kind of pigeonhole others when we meet them. Do, you, do people act surprised when they find out that, yes, you're an English teacher, but you also rode Harley? Certainly at that time, yes, there were some, although it was always kind of funny that when my students would see me out, they would recognize me even in black leather. And I love that they always bring their parents or whoever was with them, their friends, because that was quite the the sort of rewarding experience to get to introduce them to their bike or the teacher or the principal. And certainly when I was a principal at Merced, my AP also rode a Harley. So we rode to school together, and that was always fun for everyone. Oh, nice. Nice. Um, 
the memoir focuses on your life with Dwayne and the the motorcycles. Uh, there's also other threads that run through there in terms of, you know, being a step parent for the first time, um, your relationship with your children. You know, there's all kinds of threads that run through there. How, how did you choose what to, what to put into the memoir specifically? Um, to, what was that process like for you, I guess? Well, one of the things that Joyce taught me, and I'm always this way, I tend to do a narrative arc of major scenes throughout the story. I'd know where I want to enter the story, where I wanted to end, and where sort of the turning point was. And I had some scenes arced or at least plotted out. I am not one of those people who write by the seat of their pants. I at least have to have an idea, and I can discover things along the way. But in this case, I knew I had to, after I finished writing, I would say, oh, I needed to add more about that. And certainly all of our, you know, our daughters and my son were part of our story. And I wanted to make sure I I got some pivotal sort of scenes, you know, how my daughter came to love Dwayne, how my relationship with his daughter Jessica evolved, and essentially how I became completely estranged from my son. And I knew those stories had to echo what was happening in my life with Harley. It was, you know, a very happy marriage for 15 years. We never argued, but there were other, and I think all of us have moments of happiness, but there are things happening that are not always part of that joy that, you know, dark moments happen for all of us. And certainly my son mm-hmm. and at his sister's wedding, we I described that conversation and he doesn't occur in the book anymore because he refused to see my mother at her, you know, on her deathbed. And so that mm-hmm. was it for us. We've not talked since and that's been 20 years. So, Oh wow! Oh, I'm and I do wondering think about there are that. people who experience uh, yes, and and you know I do think there are people who have that experience of being estranged from their parents, their children, and I have I hear people talk about that all the time. They tend to talk to me about that, about how you move forward and how you you know continue to on with your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was the writing of the book? Um, cathartic for you uh, you know you did you did focus uh, Joyce said focus on the happy so was it cathartic or how was that process well it was cathartic it was you know extremely painful because I started with the happy but I had to also relive those moments of the diagnosis the illness and you know ultimately the end and so mm-hmm. those things were particularly and you know as you read the book you know I'm a, I'm fairly I'm an active writer. It's almost like a movie. I try to be in present in the moment and put the reader there with me. And so being in those moments were painful. And there are days, you know, you just write, you kind of curl up and go to bed. But I would say by the revision process, the catharsis had probably happened because it still makes me tear up. My voice cracks, but it is not as deeply painful because now that the story almost happens to marry the character rather than me, the person. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, Are you working on a new project now? I am indeed. I've got, you know, a few pages left. Uh, It is not a memoir, but it is, you know, a true life novel, perhaps based on real events. My mother was a a Catholic in a small northwest town filled with Baptists, and she was married at 15, my, and my father committed suicide. So there's some elements of her story that I think make a great story, but I obviously didn't live her story, so I'm adding in my little moments of fiction. It'll be mostly fictionalized account of my mother's life, and I feel she kind of deserves that story to be told because, like mm-hmm. me, she was a strong, independent woman who was kept back. You know, she married in the 50s. We know what women were not expected to do. And so I think she's another strong woman whose story needs to be told. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's great. Um, You can tell in the book that you had a a really strong relationship with your mom. So I think it's great that you're telling that story. Well, and Um, that relationship became, we we were estranged for 15 years. We sort of echoed my experience with my son until I kind of reached out to her and we reconnected. and, And Dwayne certainly made our relationship stronger. Time to take our second break of the podcast, but when we come back, we'll have the conclusion of my interview with Mary Jane Black. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! 
Hey. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with Mary Jane Black about her memoir. Um, she wrote a Harley, and we are about to see how truly terrible my memory is. But thankfully, Mary Jane was very gracious at my memory loss. So let's get back to that interview. Are you still an English teacher? I, I'm trying to remember your 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 bio, what you're doing now. I am not. I am a literary okay. specialist for the state That's of right. Texas. So, That's and right. and what I tend to work with teachers and principals in school districts on basically what I did as a teacher and a principal on reading and writing and literacy skills for students on how they you know build those in students. I don't work with kids anymore. I work with teachers and principals. Okay. Um, so, as um, a teacher, as a principal, as as a literacy specialist, I'm, I'm sure that you've always that you you've written in a lot of different capacities. Um, you you talk you talked a little bit about your experience with um, Joyce Maynard. Did you want to be an author before that, or did that kind of prompt you to write something for publication? Well, actually, I have wanted to be a writer my whole life, and it's interesting when we talk about my relationship with my mother. She was my first writing teacher, and I suspect, and I probably will have to cover this somehow in a story that includes hers, is that I think she wanted to be a writer because I remember when I was about eight, she would buy us big chief tablets, and we would write stories for each other and read them out loud to each other. And so it's certainly at that age I thought I was going to be one. Then, you know, I married relatively young for lots of reasons. And became a teacher of writing rather than a writer. This was kind of a return to an old dream, actually. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Do you have then advice for aspiring authors? Well, yes. And this someone said this sounds very teachery of me, so I apologize <laughs> up front. But truthfully, I think we forget that writing is a craft. It's a discipline. And yes, mm-hmm. there's some art involved in it. But there's also a lot of hard work, and you have to sort of think about, you know, Vern Clinkenbeard writes a book about writers need to remember that the heart of their craft is the sentence. And you are making sentences. You need to think about what is the strongest sentence, and really at that level. And so I say, you know, take some courses, join a writer's club so that you have people to read to and set you deadlines. You need to sort of immerse yourself in the language. And certainly if you want to be published, you should probably attend some writer's conferences practicing the pitch and sort of making those network connections that you need to make. So it's not necessarily just isolating yourself in an attic somewhere and writing the great American novel. You really do have to have other people involved in it, and you need to, you know, concentrate on how to write the best craft you can possibly write. Mm-hmm. Um, this is just a little off topic, but I, uh, Dwayne was always very supportive of, uh, of you and of your decisions in your marriage, what do you think he would think of the book? I'm, I'm sure he'd be supportive, but what would he say, do you think? I think he always knew that was sort of a hidden dream. He certainly learned. One of the things we learned is that we had to enjoy others' passions, not just we shared the Harley, but, you know, he was a drag racer and, and those kind of things, and I learned to love those. And he certainly learned to go to bookstores with me because every trip had to include a bookstore. And mm-hmm. even though he wasn't a big reader, he certainly knew that I wanted to write, and he would he would be so happy that I finally did this. And I think he would be glad that I told our story because we both thought it was pretty remarkable. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you take the time to read for yourself, do you have favorite authors or genres? Well, I, I must confess I do read the great new novels coming out, but my true sort of relaxation is mystery and suspense. 
So I'm sort mm-hmm. of into the Scandinavian noir, you know, and I read some things like Craig Johnson to get me in touch with the Western sort of mysteries. But certainly, mystery and suspense is my, this is what I relax with on a rainy day and a cup of coffee. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, you have a website, I know. So can you tell people where they can find you on the Internet as well as social media? Absolutely. Uh, I'm MaryJaneBlack.com, and there's a contact form there if you want to you know, sign up for my newsletter, you want to get in touch with me, I'll be happy to email you back. If you'd like me to talk to your book club or make a visit to your area, just contact and let me know. And I'm on Facebook at Mary Jane Black Author. And so you okay. can certainly get in touch with me there. All right. Thank you. I, I was actually laughing when I looked your website up because I just typed in Mary Jane Black and it kept trying to give me shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do love shoes. And that is why yes. it is Mary Jane Black because there's a famous Irish singer who's named Mary Black that lots hmm. of people, when they just do the Mary Black, they get her. And I'm like, nope, I'm not an Irish folk singer in my spare time. So that's not me. Right. right. <laughs> Although, uh, hey, maybe that's a, a side. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Certainly, Dwayne introduced me to lots of different types of music, but not. I'm not much of a singer. <laughs> um, what have we not talked about or covered that you would like for people to know about this book or um, writing in general? Uh, well, I don't think. I think we covered everything. I I always like to make sure by the end that I say that one thing I want people to learn from my story is that grief is not something you get over in a year or two. Mm -hmm. So if you've lost someone, you really need to, you know, know that it's a part of you, that it's not something to be ashamed of, and that you just, you know, reach out and find people who share your journey with you. Don't do it alone. Like writing, Mm -hmm. you know, you need other people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Our our culture tends to you know, put uh, timelines on grief and everyone's experience is different. Absolutely. I know at one point I had a counselor who assured me that after the first year it would be better because I wouldn't have last year at this time. And I thought, no, the second year is probably worse because I realized it was really permanent. So Mm -hmm. I think we all have Mm -hmm. to grieve in our own way. Absolutely. Yeah. Mary Jane, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I very much enjoyed the book and reading your st- yours and Dwayne's story. So thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for having me. And I, I was delighted to talk about the book and my memories. Thank you once again to Mary Jane for joining me to talk about her memoir. She wrote a Harley, a memoir of love and motorcycles. I really enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed hearing her or reading her story, her and Dwayne's story, the challenges they faced, the obstacles they overcame, the the love that they had for each other and for writing and um, all of the things that they learned from each other. They just had this really great relationship that came to them a little later in life and really it sounds like um, fulfilled something in both of them that they had been lacking so it's nice to read it's nice to read stories like that even when they have some sad parts which uh, you know I'm not giving anything away because we talked about it in the interview plus it's in the the description on the book so uh, even even with the sad parts it was it was great to read this lovely, lovely story of relationship and um, new adventures and new interests. And I, I learned a lot. So I, 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 I chalk that up as a win always when I, I'm interested in a book, when I learn something from a book and when it is, um, you know, a, a, a great read that I want to keep coming back to. So if you are a fan of memoirs like I am, if you are interested in Harleys, whether having written them or not, you should definitely check out this book. As always, I want to say thank you to you, my listeners. And um, as always, remind you to please, uh, if you like the podcast, go ahead and subscribe to it. Uh, like us on our social media pages, follow us, retweet, re, you know, do all those wonderful things that help us out so much in this world of internet and social 
social media. And um, also, if you would be so kind as to leave us a lovely review, it, you know, you don't have to leave us uh, the not so good reviews. <laughs> We're fine if you just if you just uh, keep those thoughts to yourself. But if you could leave us a lovely review, that that really helps us out. So thank you so much. As always, I um, very much appreciate you, my listeners. Hope you had a great Tuesday and um, that your week is going swimmingly, however it is going. Uh, that didn't make any sense, but I, we, I do hope, will hope that your week is going well and continues to go well. And I hope, as always, that it contains time for you to get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.